Uh, it was in Torrington, Connecticut. Perfect. And in which war did you serve, Richard? Vietnam. And what was your branch of service? Navy. And what was your highest rank when you got out? Petty Officer Second Class, Aviation Ordnance Second Class, which is E5. E5. And just do a brief summary in general of the locations that you served at. Okay, it started off at Naval Recruit Training in Great Lakes. Uh, that was in 1966. Uh, I went to NAS and NAAS Chase Field in Beeville, Texas. That was a, a pilot training. We trained tra pilots and uh, Marine Corps and Navy pilots. Mm -hmm. And I was there until approximately late 67. Then I got orders to uh, uh, report to NAS North Island uh, for uh, SEER training, SEER school training, uh, deep water survival, air crew photography, and then I went to uh, Moffett Field in California, which is right outside of San Francisco, for P3 FAM school. P3, what was that? P3 Familiarization School, FAM school. Okay. Right? Because I was a uh, I was an ordinance man, and ordinance and flew in P3 squadrons. Okay. And it was a voluntary thing, but that's what really what I wanted to do. And then I went to uh, uh, NAS Barbers Point, Hawaii, and that was in 1968, after I got out of school. And from 68 till February of 69, I was at Barbers Point, and then uh, we we got tra we we went to Vietnam. We uh, we were there for approximately six hours, a little better than six months, right? We flew out of uh, Unipol, Thailand, and also Da Nang and Cameron Bay in Vietnam. And then from there you returned home. And then I, then I, yeah, then I got back, I got back, we got back uh, about a week, week and a half, and then I got out of the service, went to uh, Treasure Island, uh, which is the Navy, you know, goodbye type of deal, deal right in California, right. and that was that was a day before Thanksgiving in 1969 that I got out. Actually, got out of the Navy. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the one thing: SEER training. The acronym. What what is the acronym? SEER. SEER is Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape. It's a it's a, a Navy SEAL operated uh, instruction instruction and uh, instruction. And uh, if you were going to NAM, you had to have you had to go through serious school because serious school kind of dealt with you know situations if you get shot down, how to take care of yourself, how to avoid capture, how to eliminate people if you did get captured, you know, well, all those all those good things, right. things you can really look, use in civilian life. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was uh, that was a a very short school, ended up about two weeks, right? But, but that's serious survival. Evasion, resistance, and escape. Yeah. Okay, so were you drafted or did you enlist? No, I enlisted. I got a draft notice, and my father kind of said, you will not get drafted. He didn't give me a lot of advice, but, but that's one thing he said. You enlist, not rather than get drafted. And so that's that's uh, that's what I did. And I got, I got three months to settle my affairs, mm -hmm. and uh, then I... Left uh, left Harrington January eleventh, nineteen sixty six, right, for uh, for the Great Lakes. But uh, yeah, it was a, one of the better things I did because and, and I you know, I went to Nam anyway, right. Yeah. But but I my conditions were a lot better than a lot of guys. What was the impression of, of your your rest of your family when you joined? Well, they were proud. My my brother was also in the Navy. Uh, he was he was uh, aviation also. He he was on an aircraft carrier, a Ranger. He spent most of this time in school. He was a, a guided missile uh, specialist, right? He, he, he was a smart guy, right? And and he uh, he was in uh, in 1950 in the mid 50s because I'm the youngest of my family, mm -hmm. right? And so being being uh, uh, enlisting in the navy was was is sort of like a tradition. My father was never in service, but uh, you know we kind of I carried on the tradition just a bit, right? And I was, uh, I'm glad, I, I really, I'm glad I, you, you know, the thing is, when you, 
when you get into, when you go into the service, you meet a bunch of people that you never, you know, would meet normally, you know, from different parts of the country, different parts of the world too. And uh, without that experience, I think somebody, a lot of people are limited. You know, they 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 just you know they're in their own little world and never expand. Safe the service did that, which was a, which is a really good thing to you know to undergo. I, I I'm really glad I enlisted. So you you remember your your first day, the date the date that you actually enlisted. Tell me about your first few days, basic training. What you know, what was it like? This whole well, new world, really. Right? <laughs> well, I got when I got to the Great Lakes, a cold place, right, and. <laughs> It was cold, but there was no snow in the ground until we walked in the gate in the Great Lakes. We had to get off the bus, and it started snowing. Oh. <laughs> it was in the morning, about ten o'clock. It started snowing, it snowed all day, right? So here we are. You know, we had we had most of our company, our boot camp company, was from Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, New York, and New Jersey, but the, we had a few guys from from the south, and they weren't really dress for this. Yeah. And they didn't give us our, our issue yet. We didn't get our, yeah. our uh, Navy issue clothes yet. So the first day we're you know going through indoctrination and you know get, you know giving us the bedding and everything, but no clothes yet. And uh, we finally went to bed, it had to be about uh, nine o'clock at night. And uh, we were in, we were in sleep we were sleeping for about three hours and all of a sudden we got rusted up. We had to shovel snow. <laughs> so here we are, three three hours in the navy. I remember shoveling snow. There's a lot of snow, right? Shoveling snow, right? And like I said, I was dressed for it, right? The guys from our area were dressed for it. Poor guys from the down south. I don't really, you know, this this what is this stuff, right? So uh, right then and there, as I'm shoveling this, I don't think I'm gonna like this damn navy. <laughs> but after that. Everything got warmer. Every, every place after the Great Lakes it got warmer. Yeah. Right. But that, but that, that was my first impression of the Navy. Shoveling snow. Shoveling snow. And then the next day we're up, up early, right? I was in the top rack, in the barracks. Those lights come on. Here you are. You're out. Move, move it, move it, move it. Right. Type of one. And everybody thinks the Navy is easy compared to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, well, the Marines are obviously the worst boot camp. But our boot camp instructor, our, our, our uh, company commander, he was, he was a tough guy, right? Yeah. And we had it tough. It was, a, it was a tough boot camp. But first few days, you know, indoctrination, and then, we, then you're, you never get enough sleep. And then you, <laughs> then you take tests. They call it uh, the ARI, GCA, they, you know, for placement, where, where, where you're best suited for and uh, you're tired most of the time. Yeah. So, but they give you all kinds of tests, sonar, you know, all kinds of things. So, you know, typical boot, boot camp stuff, tie and knots, right? Yeah. But I went, the, when I when I enlisted, I went air aviation, right? That's a green stripe, right? Versus a regular seaman type of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's another really good thing. I had advice from, from uh, a friend of my brother's who was, who, he was an air crewman in a P-2, Neptune. Mm -hmm. And he says, when you get into boot camp, tell them you want aviation. I said, it sounds great. All right, let's do it. I like, because I, I, I always like flying. I love, I love planes. And uh, so we ended up, <laughs> you know, most of the, most, most of our boot, my boot camp company were, 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 they call it black shoe, which is, uh, you know, semen, mm -hmm. rather than, you know, uh, green stripe aviation. Very, very few people in aviation, right? They didn't get the advice. So, consequently, make a, you know, I'm putting a cart before the horse here, but I was four years in the Navy, and I was never on a ship. Never on a ship. Oh, really? I never, never, which is a unique story, right? I, I flew over a lot of ships. <laughs> I was aviation, so just, oh. I went, so I went down to, you know, went to boot camp and all there. Uh, it was tough. Our, our company won the the uh, tug of war championship mm -hmm. for the for the for the, the whole base. Yeah. I was on the tug of war team. I used to I used to be a little lighter, but <laughs> a lot stronger. <laughs> but we, you know, so they they gave us some perks. We didn't. We, we had two two uh, uh, R and Rs. Two two. Uh, uh, well, actually, yeah, it was two. 
I went to Milwaukee. Most of the people went to Chicago from the Great Lakes. She went, you got, you got a 12 hour right. uh, liberty. And I went to Milwaukee, right? And I don't know why, but I, everybody else was going to Chicago. I had to be different. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was fun. I mean, but uh, that was that was it. That was the only breaks. Because of the, we were a tug of war thing, we got a little bit, we got more perks because we were, we were like celebrities in our yeah. company, right? Our company was about 135 guys to start with, right? We ended up after after the health problems. There were some health problems. Uh, guys getting pneumonia, right? Uh, guys that kind of flunked out. We ended up with something like 88 graduates out of oh, 135. Right. We lost a lot of people, and it was tough. A tough time. Great Lakes was cold. I mean, you you get up all early in the morning and you know, there's snow banks all over the place, right? <laughs> after after we got there, it started snowing. <laughs> yeah. I wish we got there a little earlier, but, but anyway, it was it was a tough, uh, uh, tough, tough hold. But then I uh, graduated. Uh, let's see, it was a, a day before the St. Patrick's Day, 1966. We got we got into New York, right? Took a train, mm -hmm. got back to New York March 17th on St. Patrick's Day in uniform, and <laughs> we went to. Uh, we went to uh, an Irish bar. <laughs> Didn't know it was an Irish bar when we went in there. And I was supposed to, you know, we were, we had a couple of buddies from Bristol, right, and myself. You know, we, we were gonna we were gonna head up to up to Connecticut, but we thought we'd have a beer or something. Drinking age was eighteen in New York, mm -hmm. and we we stopped in this Irish bar, <laughs> and it was like eleven o'clock in the morning or something. Didn't buy a drink, right, because at that time everybody liked service. Right? Yeah. Nineteen sixty six, right. And so, about 10 o'clock that night, we were still in the bar. And I called my father. He says, where? He says, where the hell are you? I says, well, I'm in some bar in New York, some Irish bar in New York. He says, oh, my God. <laughs> he says, when you get here, give me a call. So we ended up, I got back back about midnight or so, right? Mm -hmm. Back to, back to uh, uh, Torrington. My girlfriend was waiting, but she, she left. She got sick and tired. But hey, you know what? You, you get out of boot camp, you gotta you, you gotta let it fly a little bit. Yeah. So we had I had like two weeks off after I get out of boot camp, and then we went to uh, uh, I got my orders to the and well my, I originally was supposed to go to air control school mm -hmm. in Glencoe, Georgia. That was going to be my rate, but the school was closed for some reason, and they didn't want me sitting around there, so they sent me down to Texas, down to uh, uh, Chase Field, which is a a facility to train uh, Marine Corps and Navy pilots, right? So it was like we were, they were flying F nines at that time, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of outdated planes. And they used those in uh, uh, the Korean War, right? But they're they're training these guys in F nines. There's a TF nine J, which is a two seater, and an F nine, a single seater. So I ended up with being a plane. Started off being a plane captain. Uh, you know, sending you know. Sending the planes out, you know, checking, checking all the hydraulics and everything, mm -hmm. right? And off you go. And uh, I did that for a while. No word about the school. And I kind of liked doing what I was doing around the jets and everything. So I didn't, I didn't push the issue. Yeah. Then I decided to, to, to go for a rate. So I went to ordinance. Ordinance uh, in charge of weapon systems. Now, the, the, the F-9 carried two 20-millimeter cannons. Uh, we, we carried practice bombs that, you know, little... No cracks, but it, it was it was good training, and learned to assemble and disassemble a twenty millimeter cannon. Right, yeah. did it constantly. Right, can almost do it in your sleep. Uh, and uh, I made great. I got I got an E. I, I, I passed the petty officer third class exam, and uh, on the first increment. And I said, I guess I I'm going to go ordinance. Right, so ended up. Uh, I was on the tow crew. We we, we armed up. Uh, uh, one squadron up there, uh, one, one squadron had F-11s, right? And we, were, we flew F-9s. And we used to arm the, at the end of the runway, we used to arm the uh, the, the cannons, right? Put the feed back in, take the breach, in, you know, breach block out, right? And uh, because we don't want to, <laughs> we're, we're dealing with students here. We don't want anybody hitting a pickle in front of the flight line. So here they are like this, and we go pull out the, pull out the breach block, and then, Funny story. This is one one pilot. He's you know I, 
I got his you know, I got I put his feet back in, took his breech block out, and he's waving at me like this. You know, and the, yeah, right, yeah, the engine's revving it all bit. So I dropped the ladder, climbed up, and said, Yes, sir, what, what's the problem? And on a single seat, F9, they have a when your when your nose is open, mm -hmm. they have a light. Okay. Right? Yeah. The minute you close the close the nose and lock it, right? A light goes off. He's waving like crazy, right? Now the nose is still open, right? So I, I said, Yes, sir. He says, You can you can you make that little light go out like the plane captains do? <laughs> I says, Yeah, let me try that. Let me try that. <laughs> Found a ladder, put it back up, locked it, locked the nose. He goes, Maybe. <laughs> he gives me a thumbs up. <laughs> yes, sir, have a flight, have a nice flight. <laughs> <laughs> then there was there was another time. We watched these planes take off. They're like like this. One up, two up, three up, right? Mm -hmm. and we're waiting for four, right? No four. Then we get a call from the control tower. Four is down at the end of the runway. Boom. We put the flights on and we flash down the runway. Luckily, it doesn't happen very often in Texas, but it was, it was muddy, right? At the end of the runway. Yeah. Guy blew his main mounts, right? He dug his nose in, right? Like this. Mm -hmm. And two of us jumped out, right? One guy jumps. Take, take, then you know, to, to take care of the cannon, right? Right. I jumped up to the cockpit to see if the pilots are right. <laughs> he was, he was a Marine Corps, Marine Corps pilot, and he, he was, he had a little accident there. <laughs> it was, but I said, "You're all right, sir." He says, "What happened? What happened?" I says, "Well, you're, you're all right. Your plane is dug in, but you're all right. I think you blew some main mounts here." He was. It turns out the guy was from Connecticut. Oh really? I found out later, right? But he, you know, we got him off. The thing is, he, he had it, the first thing he had to do is he had to put a, a pin in the ejection seat, right? Right before you take off the ejection seat, the pins pins pulled. So I had the pin, right? Put it in the ejection seat so he wouldn't eject himself from the ground. And then I got him out of the out of the plane. But that you know that was that was the excitement in Texas, right? <laughs> so I put it for my orders and. They call it a dream sheet. Yep. And you never never get what you want. But, but I put it in for a dream sheet. And I, I knew that ordnance would flew in P3 squadrons, right? So I, I put in for a P3 squadron anywhere on the East Coast. Hopefully Brunswick, Maine, which is closed now. But at that time, uh, I said, I want a P3 squadron anywhere on the East Coast. I got my orders. And he's got a P3 squadron. And the yeoman tells me he got he got a P3 squadron in Barbers Point. I says, where the hell is Barbers Point? He says, it's in Hawaii. I says, oh, I'll rough it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. okay. Poor All right. <laughs> I'm not going to fight that. <laughs> and it turns out there's an E5. The guy was in the Navy for something like 12, 14 years. He got his orders at the same time. He got orders to a carrier. Which I thought is where I was going to go to, right? But he says, how the hell do you get those orders? I says, Pike, you got to live right, man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I got my orders, and I went to uh, uh, the first place was NAS North Island. And that was part of, you know, Sears School, uh, uh, Deep Water Survival. I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, uh, deep Water Survival is, you go out in the, in the Pacific, right? And... Uh, they give you what they call a poopy suit, right? Yeah, because the water's cold. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to keep 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 you dry inside. Well, I picked out the wrong poopy suit because <laughs> you're standing in a, on a 12, 20, what is it, a 15, 15 foot, 15 or 20 foot tower on the back of a, a boat. And the boat's moving and you got a parachute harness on. You jump off the, you jump off the, the, the platform and then you hit the water. Now the boat's still moving. So the whole idea is it's supposed to simulate parachute drag. Mm -hmm. So when the par parachute goes into the water, it's you're blowing across, and you got to unhook, right? The parachute harness, right? right? So, you, but it's easier said than done because you're getting dragged through the water, right? And water is, you know, the waves are, you know, two, three foot, three foot, four foot. And you're doing this, right? You pull, finally you get it unhooked. And you, you put your arm up in the air like this, Mm -hmm. And they have what they call a UDT pickup. Mm -hmm. 
They throw a loop over your arm and pull you up the side of a boat while it's moving. Well, that was fun. <laughs> even got even got better though. So you get off that, right? And then then you get you get there was four of us that they picked up like that yeah. in that boat. And then they throw a life raft into the water. Then you're back in the water, and you uh, you gotta inflate the life raft and get in. So you, once you're in there, you you put out a solar still, try to make fresh water. You know, the sun. Now this poopy suit I was telling you about. Had all kinds of little pinholes and up around the feet. So I'm, I have a May West on, right? But I had water up to about here inside the poopy suit, right? It added another, you know, 50 pounds or something, yeah, yeah. right? Luckily I had the May West. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you float around in the water and then a helicopter goes in. Flies in and it's going to pick you up. It drops a horse collar and picks you up, right? You got to swim to the chopper. Now you got, you got more. You know, foam because of the blades and everything. You swim to the chopper, put the horse collar on, and they pull you up, mm -hmm. right? Get you out of the water. So, my turn comes. I get in the horse collar, no problem. Swimming there was because I had a lot more weight because a lot of water with me, right? Get in the horse collar and pull me up. And get in the helicopter and take the horse collar off, and I start sliding up the door again right? because all my fuck. He says, no, oh, the guy says, where, where are you going, guy? <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that, that was that was fun. I mean, it really was. It would have been great if I didn't I had a poopy suit that didn't <laughs> leak. <laughs> you know, didn't leak. But uh, that was part, that was deep water survival. Then there was Sears School. Sears School was a SEAL run outfit. Or seal. It was a, 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 one of these deals where they were put out in a desert, the high desert of California. And you have no food. You have no food. It's just what you can catch, right? right. Uh, you don't have a lot of water. They give you, you know, canteen here, canteen there. You stay hydrated enough, right? But it's, it included a, a night evasion course. You have to go through uh, barbed wire and stuff like that. They're firing, firing over your head. I don't think it was live ammo. But I, I don't know. I, I never wanted to find out, right? <laughs> but but it, then you had to evade at night, right? You had a rendezvous point. You had and and uh, it was it was one of these deals where you, you, your whole company there was about twenty of us I think twenty maybe a little better twenty officers and enlisted right mm -hmm. together right so everybody had to go through the search school and you, you go through this night night invasion course right then you go through a forced twenty mile hike up to the high mountains you start off and you start off in the uh, uh, you know cool part of the day. And it gets hot. And you go up halfway up, you go to this one area where you can replenish your water. It's you know, like a almost like a state park up there. And then you gotta back down. You go to your territory. I'll tell you, really. Brutal. Right? And you're doing this with no food. What you just what you can catch. Yeah. Right? We ate a snake. <laughs> I hate snakes. <laughs> Tasted pretty good now. Right. But one thing that we did do, and I find this is fantastic. They, we went down to the, the SEAL camp, right, the instructors, and we're standing there, and they're, they're, they're giving us some info, right? And we're down in their, in their camp. And I noticed a five-pound bag of rice. Me and a couple other guys, right? See that? So, you know, sitting right outside their tent. So what do you think? It's worth a shot, right? So we distracted them a little bit. Right? I went over and grabbed the... A five pound bag of rice, and there was a pot right next to it. Got the pot, right? Went back to our, our, our camp. We had five pounds of rice. 20 guys, and we went down there, and this is the first food we've eaten except for the snake, right? So, huh, the next morning, seals come up to our camp. Uh, did you guys steal five pounds of rice? Steal? Steal? And we had a, a, a yacht, a, the commander in charge, right? Steal? No, no, I didn't steal anything. We did five, fine, five pounds of rice. <laughs> Guess what? And I think it was a plan. You see how resourceful we were? Mm -hmm. I, I still think that was it, right? But we make, we took advantage of it. And so, hey, that was food. Okay, that lasted. Then they put you in a POW camp, interrogation, everything, water torture, the whole thing, right? They, they put you in a small box, right? 
and I, you know, a black box they call it. They found the smallest one they could find for me. <laughs> and they closed the latch. Now, they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to break you. Give them the name right to serve them. They, and you don't give them any unit or what, 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 your, what your rate is or anything like that. It, it, it simulates a POW camp. And uh, got a count off, right? They come up and they hit, if you're inside a box, they come up with a pipe and they hit the top of the pipe, uh, box of the pipe. It's loud, right? And you yell a lot of number and just want to make sure they haven't passed out anymore, right? So then they come out, they open the box, and when they open the box, they let us out. I couldn't, I couldn't even stand up. My legs were gone. I'm both, both legs were asleep. So I, you know, I, I hit the floor, and both guys on each side of me grabbed me, held me up, just let them go. No. <laughs> so they, you know, it, it's all a test. But the thing is, you have a secret clearance, and you don't, if you flunk out of serious school, you lose your clearance. You lose it, you don't fly it. You don't fly it, right? So everybody was determined to get through this. And it was, it was the torque, yeah, I mean, you interrogation, you get slapped around, you're carrying rocks back and forth, just like camp with machine guns, and you get to look for something to, anytime you can get an escape thing, never had the opportunity to escape, but there's like, Machine gun nests all, all over this camp, with barbed wire and all nine yards, just like a regular POW camp. But uh, this one, one little, little seal guy, right, he kept giving me a hard time, giving me a hard time, just because I was big and he was, he wasn't so big, right? So, at the end of the exercise, he says to me, "You made it, great job, right? Is I see you on your feet." If I see you on the beach, I'll buy you a beer. I says, you better hope you don't see me on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. That, that was super school. Then I went to, from there, I went up to Matha, Matha Field P3 familiarization, which is, you know, you, you, you work your rate, you know, like ordinance. I, I, I worked uh, 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 loading weapons. Uh, P3 carries all kinds of armor. It's all uh, air to surface, not nothing air to air. We carried bullpup missiles. We carried... Uh, torpedoes, mines, nu depth bombs, nuclear depth bombs. We actually carry two different kinds of nu nukies. Uh, you learn how to, to load all these things, right, safely. All the switches in the cockpit, and all the nine yards. And after you're through the P3 fam, you go to you know, your duty station, which is mine, Barbers Point, Hawaii. And uh, I remember uh, I got down, just got down to Barbers Point. I was in the NCO club. I was having a beer, and this this guy comes up to me with a Tennessee accent. Right? He says, "I hear you're, I hear you're the new ordinanceman, the VP six. I says, "Yeah, I am." He says, "Well, damn, welcome." I says, "Thank you." He says, "You're from the south." I says, "Darn right." Yeah. His face lit up. He says, "Whereabouts?" I says, "Connecticut, southern New England." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he gives me this look. He says, "Well, welcome anyway." <laughs> Turned out he was my he was uh, uh, one of my best buddies in that uh, while I was there. In fact, we got out at the same time in, in '69. But uh, he was a gunner in Crew 20, 12, and I ended up being a gunner in Crew Three. But I never forget his face. He says, "I was born in Torrington." <laughs> he says, "Torrington." I says, "Yeah, yeah." I says, you know, remember John Brown? <laughs> and he was born there too. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> really. But we, 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 we hit it off with it. Most of my company uh, was uh, my, boot, my, my boot camp shop. Most of the uh, 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 ordinance shop, most of them were from the South. Right? Uh, there was Louis from Tennessee, a couple guys from Alabama, Georgia, another couple guys from Tennessee. Right? And there was, a, there was maybe four of us that weren't, or, you know, when one guy from Colorado. One guy from California, myself, right? So, in get along famously, right? We, uh, we, you know, it was a good, it was a good crew. So I ended up getting to be an ordinanceman in Crew Three. Uh, we we did uh, ASW exercises. That was our big thing. And uh, what is the ASW? Anti-anti-submarine warfare. So we're constantly working with submarines, doing this stuff. We're the ordinanceman is in charge of loading sauna buoys, right? Uh, 
uh, smoke. Every time you drop a sound wave, you drop a smoke. And every time you drop a, you know, this is a pattern for the pilot. And then you have what these things about like this, called a practice step charge, mm -hmm. right? So when, when you think you have a, a sub corner, right? You drop the PDCs, right? But the patterns, as a sound wave, you have, you have a passive, uh, an active and a passive uh, sound wave. It goes to different depths, right? And you try to corner the sub in an area, and then you go in and, you know, go in for the kill. We were pretty good at it, right? We, uh, we ended up uh, going up to California with our sub qual up in Mountain Field, and we worked with a Nuki boat. And they, they got our times mixed up. <laughs> they, we were supposed to fly at, 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 at uh, you know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we ended up going out flying at 3 o'clock in the morning. We never got the word. We got back and we were out partying. Everybody in the whole crew was out partying. <laughs> and uh, they woke us up an hour later, free flight to plane. They said, no, 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 you got it all mixed up. And it was my afternoon. No, they changed it. You guys didn't get the word. <sighs> so everybody had a few beers in them, right? Yeah. And, and off we went to the plane. So <laughs> our, 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 our radar operator, right, we had a car, he came on. He was, he was in bad shape. So the pilots come out, the officers come out, and we were crew fighting for about an hour. And they come out, and they looked around, and I said, pilot says, you guys didn't get the word, did you? <laughs> nope. He says, oh, no. He says, where's Tim? Oh, he's passed out over there. <laughs> He strap them in, we gotta go. <laughs> we didn't use radar that, that much, you know. I mean, you know, because we, mostly, you know, with submarines you're doing, you're, you're doing a, a Jez, Jez and Julie uh, electronic stations, mm -hmm. right? So they, so you don't need, you know, you can get it, you can get by without radar, right? So we strapped them in, off we went. We were working with a Nuki boat. Right? What's a Nuki boat? A, a nuclear sub, right? Okay. And three crews went up. And we were the only one that got the kill that day, right? Oh. So we got a kill on the, on the Nuki boat, right? And the tackle, the tactical coordinator, who was my direct boss, Lieutenant JG, he goes back and he says, Zach, so he nailed that dude. I says, Lieutenant, you don't know how, that, how much that took out of me. Because <laughs> what you're doing is this. You're, 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 I, I'm in the air, I'm basically on my feet, most of all things. And they got these railings on both sides of the thing. And it, you're, 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 you're turning like this, turn your feet off the deck. And your your legs are going this way, your legs are going that way. Normally I like that, right? But after a few beers, that wasn't wasn't the most pleasant experience. But anyway, uh, we, we nailed that. We nailed that dude. And uh, from there, you know, we, we did a bunch number of ASW exercises. We we uh, we were chasing Russian subs and trawlers, right? We went out to Midway, a place called Midway Island, mm -hmm. right? And we flew out there after a, a a Russian tra trawler, right? Right, who wasn't really a trawler, it was a spy ship. And we never lost contact with him. And we also, we also, uh, there was a, a, a Russian sub that was shadowing the west coast. We picked him up in Hawaii, flew all the way up, sent three crews all the way up the east coast, up to Moffat Field, right? Never lost track of him. And then followed him all the way up to the Alaska for all the Aleutians. Went mm -hmm. back home, but he was shadowing the, the West Coast, and he, we never lost. We never lost sight of him. Never, never lost him. Mm -hmm. hey, the Russians didn't like us much. <laughs> we had, we could pinpoint them everywhere, right? But anyway, that that was a peacetime thing. Mm -hmm. We got our orders uh, to to, uh, to to go on a six month deployment to Vietnam. How are we doing on time? We're good. Uh, six month deployment at uh, Vietnam. Uh, basically, our mission was to look for gun runners. We were trying to stem the flow of uh, weapons coming in from the north. The north, And uh, we did that in several areas. We did it in the South China Sea. We did it right up the Mekon and Ho Chi Minh Trail. We, we were flying constantly. Uh, what we did is we pinpoint deck cargo, right? If there was any, anything on, anything, any suspect cargo on the deck that we could spot. And I, you know, during those missions, I didn't have a lot to do except take pictures of everything on the, on the, uh, on the deck, right? And, and, you know, we'd blow it up and send it back to Sync Pack 7, 7th Fleet Headquarters, right? And, uh, 
I remember uh, a couple of times we had a uh, we had a couple one 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 uh, uh one one ship it was loaded for bear right and we were we went down and you know I'm sitting behind a co-pilot taking pictures and uh, they're all waving at us you know, they're all happy to see us it's a Chinese junk right and they're outside the territorial limits of, of Vietnam, right? 12 mile limit, couldn't touch them. Right. So, we we're in contact with the destroyer constantly, right? And he said, We got something going on down there, right? Both by there's something, you know, something going on on that deck that's not right. So, we went back over, come back up on them, and they're still waving. And they're taking a tarp off a machine gun. Uh-huh. Right? We called it in. And off we went. Here comes the destroyer. It was close to him, close enough to him, right? Saying, okay, we're coming in. He sees the destroyer. Now, uh, he's still outside the 20, 12 mile limit. He, sh he starts firing at the destroyer with a machine gun. <laughs> Big mistake. Then his next mistake was he headed for the coast. Got inside the 12 mile limit. The destroyer gives him a five inch shell over the bow, stopping. Yeah. Didn't stop. Next one, right? Direct hit, right? He must have been loaded for bear with ammo, because I'll tell you, that thing just went whoosh. We went back down looking for survivors, and nothing left. When you, you, you find little remnants of the ship here and there, right? No survivors. He must have been, he must have had a lot of stuff. But that, but that was basically what we, what we did. We were looking for guns. Same thing that the, the, the river boats did. They did it on a, on uh, on the river. Right. We pinpointed it from the air. Where and, were you? Uh, where were you stationed? You were on land. You were stationed out of land in Vietnam. Oh yeah, I flew out. Of, yeah, we we were. Our planes were too big to land on a carrier. Where were you flying out of? Where uh, were you? Unipol, Thailand. Unipol. Unipol. Yeah, U Unipol. U T A P H A O. It's it's. Oh, okay. Uh, it's yeah. a, it was at uh, uh, Royal Thai Thai uh, Air Force Base or, or Marine Marine Corps Base. Right, but then it was a big air force. I, we had a big air force complex, and we we had it rough though because we we'd go off for twelve hour flights. You know, you had a two hour pre flight and one hour post flight, so we're talking fifteen hours. But we we did, we had our planes were so big that we could cook. We had facilities. We had bunks in the back, a couple bunks in the back. Right, I could walk from the aft of the plane to the cockpit, and never have to bend over, and I'm six three, never mm -hmm. had to. Never to duck, never do it, just right down on it. All our listening devices on the port side, right? Taco, uh, Sonobu, you know, these guys, you know, they, they didn't do, they, you know, electronics technicians, they didn't have to do a lot on these because they're ASW people, mm -hmm. right? But we had a combat crew of 12, right? We had, a, we had four, four officers, pilot, co pilot, navigator, and a taco, right? And uh, we had a crew of flight, a flight engineer, second mech, uh, three electronics guys, a radio man, radar man, and me, right? But anyway, we had facilities. The plane was so big, we had facilities we could actually cook on the plane. We had like a little, little desk, a little, like a little table, mm -hmm. a half part of the plane. We always had coffee, too late. But we used to pick up our, 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 our stuff from the Air Force, right? The Air Force sounds all the way There we go. But we picked up our, our, our unprepared, which were mostly eggs and steak, right? So we'd have steak and eggs for breakfast, right? And these canned potatoes, right? And then we'd have steak and potatoes for dinner. So we ate steaks. And when we went on a flight, flight, we did it every other day. We ate steaks twice a day. <laughs> and I hate to tell them, the guys in my, my, my VFW unit, the Marines especially, I said, yeah, we roughed it. <laughs> but the thing is, we used to... We used to get extra steaks and stuff, and and like in air in the Air Force barracks, there was a refrigerator in every crew quarters. So we used to stack the steaks in the in the freezer, and you know, we we'd have a barbecue. Right at the end of the month, and the officers we 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 only claimed two officers, and, and all four officers paid. So with with the, the extra money, we bought beer, right? So we'd have. We'd have basketball games, right? Officers against the list, right? And then we'd have our steaks and beer, right? It's a tough war. 
<laughs> but but uh, we had you know, there, there were anxious moments too, right? We we, we were flying darkened ship. We're flying, uh, you know, over over you know over some really hairy areas. Our 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 return route after we after coming back, we used to fly fly over Laos. Mm -hmm. We weren't supposed to be here, right? But we did this all the time. But anyway, the dark and ship is strange. I, I relieved the flight engineer. Our second mech had a problem health wise. So I, you know, at night, I didn't have a lot to do. So I relieved the, the flight engineer, right? In the middle seat. And it's strange because you're, you're flying at night. All you got is these red, you know, in, uh, red gauges, you know, the lights on the gauges and the cock. Right. No lights on the plane at all. And the only thing you could tell was your wings level, the wings level gauge. The bubble, mm -hmm. when you know, but until we'd see a flare go up, right? So somebody on the ground, a flare would go up, and all hell would break loose. And you know, like you're at somebody's perimeter, something would hit the wire, right? And all of a sudden, you see these traces, right? All hell break loose for, for 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 a good two three minutes, right? And it stopped. And that's the only that's the only conception of you know up and down you have, right? And you see what's mm -hmm. going. It's, it's shocking. And then, you know, like you go another 15 minutes and a flare would go up over on the other side and somebody was catching hell over there, right? So, it, you know, like I said, being airborne is a lot better than being on the ground, mm -hmm. right? When we, and, and, and it got hairy, though. I mean, we, we, we picked up one time, we picked up a contact. We're sitting there, we're, we're, we're heading towards Laos, and we picked up a, a fast moving. And, and as, as the radar operator said, we got a fast mover on our six. So, okay. So we're sitting there, we're all on headset, right? Pilot says, crew set battle condition one. He says, give me a countdown at this point. It's 50 miles out, 20 miles out, 15 miles out. Now you're thinking, I'm in the after the plane. <laughs> I said, this guy's going to. He's gonna blow a missile right up my <laughs> right up my butt, <laughs> right? And then, evidently, he picked up our transponder or something, right? When he got close enough, he said he just broke off. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> but it could, you know, we didn't know. It could have been a make. Yeah. But see, you know, flying is always a situation where right? you never know uh, what's gonna happen. We we had a we'd be on station for about. I'd say a good eight eight hours on station, mm -hmm. and a couple of times uh, a plane that was supposed to relieve us didn't he had mechanical problems, so we had to, we had to refuel. We went up to Da Nang a couple of times, right, to refuel, and we were back on station, and we go back out. So we're flying another four or five hours, right, until they got they rendezvous with another plane, right. So sometimes we're out, you know, in the air a good fourteen to sixteen hours. Right and on well and on station good twelve, right and we're only supposed to be there for eight, but uh, you never know things things happen. I mean you know, you know, it's a volunteer thing, right to, to, to fly you you know it's, it's one of these deals where you you know I love flying I miss it to this day I miss it right but uh, it's a situation where you know you never know what's going to happen. I mean hey, you know engine goes and these things are they're big planes who get. Carried a com, com, combat crew of 12. Uh, the year before, we lost one of our planes in, in, in uh, Korea. Uh, they, was doing a, they were doing an ASW exercise, and the, the pilot dipped the wing 200 feet off the deck, and you misjudged. The plane went in, right? And uh, four guys four guys got out. First people that ever got out of a P 3 alive. They got thrown clear. They didn't know how they got out. Yeah. The other eight died. Right? And one of them was the ordinance. And it was, it was uploading. Like I said, the ordinance when they're always on their feet, loading stuff in the sonic buoys and stuff. Mm -hmm. He didn't make it. Right. But uh, it, 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 there's always a risk. So, you know, and you're always, you're in a war zone. You end up getting an air medal for that. Right. And plus, uh, Navy unit commendation for being in that area right? and, and doing as well as we did. Mm -hmm. right? our, our, our squad. We have, we have, we have one of the best squadrons in. And a Navy VP six there six is very tough blue sharks. Uh, anyway, uh, we got you know, we did we, we did uh, our tour over there and got back right got our orders back. It had to be November early November uh, in sixty nine. 
we were on the last cruise to leave, right? And uh, we got back to the States, ended up in, uh, uh, well, we came back, we tried to, <laughs> while we were over there too, in an LA, that, that, that's a backtrack a little bit. We, we saw just about every every country on the week, in an R&R &R in Bangkok, Thailand, which is great. A week, week in, Bang, in Bangkok, they, it was funny because they, they drove, flew us right into Bangkok International, and our own planes, big Navy planes, drop the ladder, right, and our crew gets out, right, officers in, enlisted, get out, and civilian clothes, down the ladder in Bangkok International. All these people are looking at us, says, what the hell, these, what's the CIA, what are, what's going on here, right? <laughs> and we go out and party, we party for a week, right, same thing, plane comes back in, they drop, drop the ladder, shot out the port side engines, up the ladder, back in civilian clothes, right, Back in the plane, off we went. But we saw, we saw Thailand. While I was there, I saw Thailand, Taiwan. It was in Korea. Uh, let me see where else. Japan. We flew into Japan a couple times. Uh, Okinawa. Did Okinawa too. Saw all the Far East. When when we were getting we were getting out, right? We ended up going back to Guam, and our pilot tried to talk to. <laughs> Talk them into flying, flying down to Australia first. <laughs> they they shot that down. We never got to Australia. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> we tried. We did try. We had a, we had a good tight knit crew. I, 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 the crew was everybody was and you know together right officers and we we we, we partied with our officers right. We, we drank beer with our officers. It was like, except for except for one our navigator. Our navigator was an a, a, an Annapolis grad. It's sort of a pain in the ass. <laughs> he didn't want to party with us, <laughs> but he, the rest of the crew, right? And 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 uh, we, we we had a good time. We had, you know, everybody was in, you know together. We, we we were in it together. We were going to survive together, and that's the way it was. You get really close. And uh, you had um, that same crew the whole time. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. same crew. Yeah, everybody left at the same time. Same crew. We all well, well, we we got out there. Tried to talk me into staying over there, right? They, they said, well, you know, in a critical rate, you know, I want you as my ordinance man, right? I says, Lieutenant, I can't do it, right? I said, I got to get out. He says, you got tax-free, right? You, 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 you tax, you, 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 all of your bonus will be tax-free. Everything you can get is going to be tax-free, mm -hmm. right? And, and and I already passed the E6 exam, right? Mm -hmm. The Navy take test. I just didn't have, you have to have a certain amount of time between the rate to, to pin it on. Right. And I didn't have the time. I had to ship over to get it. No, still wasn't worth it, right? But anyway, uh, we, I just wanted to get out, right? Being out of service, that was, it was tough. I, I, we got back, when we got back, uh, my, my, my tackle introduced me to his wife when we got out the plane. He says, this is the reason we're back alive. <laughs> I said, what a dramatic statement that was. <laughs> he says, no, that, and she says, oh, thank you so much. She gives me a big hug. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. I said, thank you, thank you, right? So, we had a good, a good group, a good tight knit group, and right, right to the end, I, when I, right, right near the uh, time I was supposed to go up to Treasure Island, my hair was a little long, right, and it wasn't Navy style, it was over the, over here a little bit. My chief says, "Thank you, you got to get a haircut." I says, chief, I'm getting out in three days. He says, "You got to get a haircut." So I go up to my lieutenant. I said, "Lieutenant Beard, they want the chief wants me to get a haircut." He says, "You're getting out." I said, that's what I told him. He said, he wants you to get a haircut? He said, I'll talk to him. <laughs> he, he was also our ordinance division officer, right? So he said, I, when I, when I got my picture, right? When I got out, longer, longer hair. Not long hair, you know, the longer hair, yeah. right? And not that buzz cut type of thing. <laughs> so, anyway. So what did you do? Uh, what, do you remember when you actually, your last days? In oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, I was flying. Uh, we did our last mission three days before we left, right? And then we got back to Hawaii, right? Then I had to check out of the squadron, and that was that's a funny story too because I when we we were chasing that Russian sub, we were flying out of Hawaii, mm -hmm. and we and then we had to go up to Alaska. So I talked to Av Equipment, right? I said, listen, I I need a flight check, and it wasn't regular issue because you know we don't need we didn't need him, you know, in Hawaii. 
right? Because right. I'm going to Alaska. I said, I'm not going to be running around with a pea coat on, right? I said, I can't do that, right? I said, I need a, I need a flight jacket. I said, okay, all right. So they issued me a flight jacket. He says, you've got to bring this back right after you get back. I said, yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Never brought it back. <laughs> so I had it in my, I had it in my, my duffel bag, right? And I'm checking out a squadron. And have equipment says, we have you down for a flight jacket. I said, oh, hell no, I, I turned that in a long time ago. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Ended up. <laughs> but I had, I had my crew patches on it, right? My, I had my crew patches, the squadron patch, right? My, my name and all of it, right? What goes around comes around. I ended up moving one time when I got out, and when I was a civilian, mm -hmm. I left it in the closet. Oh, <laughs> my pico. It was, I, 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 I left this place in July, right? And, it, and the closet was on the other side of the, you know, the front door open. Forgot everything in the closet. Oh. Right? My, my, oh. my flight jacket. I needed it in October. I'm looking for my flight jacket, and I said, oh, geez, I left it in the ah. Swiss Village apartment, so I went back up. Nah, no, I <laughs> But but getting out, yeah, that but that that's another thing. Uh we got out my buddy, I told you that the, the, the kid from Tennessee, right? We got out at the same time we flew we got out of uh uh we flew out of uh, flew down to Treasure Island, uh, from Treasure Island down to San Diego, and then we drove from Southern California back to his home in Tennessee, up in the Smokies, mm -hmm. Watauga. And uh it was it, it, it but we, we were going through the airport. In San Francisco, the day before Thanksgiving in '69, and I'll tell you, I, I almost lost it. This damn hippie comes up to me, right? Gets in my face. They don't do that. He says, "How many innocent women and children did your friends kill over there today?" He's calling me a baby killer. Right? And I'd be like this. <laughs> I'm right here, and Louis, my buddy, right? He says, hey, hey, I'll take care of this. He gets up in this guy's face. He says, who counts when you're having fun? Not the answer this kid wanted to hear, right? And I said, you better drag your ass. I'm going to let this boy get you. <laughs> <laughs> Takes off. But that, that's the kind of greeting we got when we got back. Yeah. And mm -hmm. to, the, to the point where I, when I got back, I went to school. I went to uh, Northwestern and I went to Central for a while, right? And I never admitted that I was in the Navy or a Vietnam veteran mm -hmm. because it wasn't thing. We were treated bad, real bad. And I, and now it's different. It's 180 out. I mean, here, here, a 20, 21 year old, 22 year old, right? You hear that, right? I lost buddies over there, right? One of the buddies that he told me I was crazy to enlist instead of he was, he, he, got, he got drafted. He was killed in 68. He was uh, 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 on an Aravac, 101st cap, right? He, he never made it up, right? But the thing is, he's on the wall. But the thing is, uh, it's a situation where I don't know what was, what was worse, the war over there or the war over here. Mm -hmm. At least over there, he knew who you were dealing with. Mm -hmm. Over here, you know, people are you know, no support at all. It was horrible, just horrible. But you know, it's like I said, it's changed. I mean, I I, I sell poppies for the VFW. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm in front of Walmart, and it, it's a situation where, uh, you know, the people are trying to, if they're good, they're good, you know, I mean, they, they appreciate your service now, but you needed that when you were 20, 21 years old. You didn't need it. You didn't need yeah. it, uh, you know. Uh, you know, I, I need it now, too, I mean, obviously. But it's, and it, it, it's a tough way to go. How are we doing with that? Oh, we're good. Don't worry about time. Huh? Don't worry about time. We're good. Okay. We we're over. We're over. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I told you. I can talk, I can yeah. talk about Blue Street. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, when you were going to school, were you going on, was on the GI Bill or? Yes. Yeah. The GI Bill. Uh, and uh, I ended up, I, 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 right after I, January, uh, January 66, uh, I started working at Pratt Whitney, right, in Southern. Right. Now, that's how I found out my eardrum was shot. And they gave me a hearing test when I got out of the Navy, right? And then you didn't want to, once you're getting out, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to throw any speed bumps into the process, you know? <laughs> and so their, their hearing test was a guy standing behind me, right? He says, can you hear me? <laughs> my, my left ear shot, right? Yeah. I mean, I didn't know it. I mean, I, I knew it wasn't where I was supposed to, right? But, but, uh, 
We had an ear black. I, fl I flew. They said never fly with a cold. I flew with a cold, and I got like an ear block in my left ear. Mm -hmm. It's almost like trying to hear with a glass over your ear, you know. Oh yeah. And and we did our post flight. Came in, you know. This is you know about a, three weeks before I was getting out, and we were on one of our last missions, and about two hours, you know, after an hour post flight, I'm in the Anzio Club having a beer, and the thing came back to atmosphere. Boom! A pop. They almost knocked me off my chair. Wow. Right? But then, you know, like I said, you, know, you, you don't do any speed bumps. You just want to get out, right? So uh, when I went to work at Pratt, they gave me a formal, real hearing test. He says, you know, you got a 40% hearing loss in your left ear. I said, well, I know there was something wrong there. It's nuts. He says, if you don't sign a waiver, we're not going to hire you because we don't want to be blamed for it. I said, oh, geez, I want the job, right? So <laughs> yeah. I signed the waiver, right? But... That's that kind of saved me because I'm, I'm getting I'm getting medical benefits because that happened. They, they gave me a whole survey, you know, a whole whole, whole bunch of tests at, at, at the VA, and they determined, yeah, you got it. You got 100 percent twin unitis left ear, right? So not a lot of money, but dude, uh, did you maintain any friendships that you made while yep. you were in service? Yeah. That, the guy I was telling you about, Louis, right? Yeah, uh, uh, he was the only one though. Uh, he, uh, I, in fact, I just talked to him about a month ago, right? And he, he went back into the service. He, he, he went back as a warrant officer in the army. He ended up going to the, to the, to the golf, the Persian golf. He ended up getting a silver star. Right? Oh, really? and, his, and his daughter got married up in Boston. <laughs> I got a call from him. It had been about two, maybe two years before I heard from Louie. I, I lost contact. All of a sudden, I get this phone call. Hey, Yank. <laughs> I said, this got to be you, Louis. He says, damn straight. <laughs> he says, my, my daughter's marrying mar mar some damn Yankee in Boston. You're going to the wedding. <laughs> is that right? And he came up. He came up to Sims Raid. His wife and him came up. And we went out partying for, for, for a couple of days. And then we went up to Boston. And Louis, Louis was a character. He came out with moonshine. He came up with moonshine. Put it on every table at the reception. Right? Right? Every table. And here's a straight, no, it's a straight lace, straight lace Boston group, right? And, and puts it down, and he comes up in his cavalry outfit, 101st Air Cap, comes in, cavalry, cavalry, you know, got a silver star. I asked him if there was any war he, that he didn't, he wasn't involved in, right? But anyway, reception, straight lace people, all of a sudden he got into the moonshine, he had it on every table. It got wild. <laughs> that party got wild. <laughs> oh, Louis, right? Yeah, I keep I keep in contact with you. Nice. Um, so Richard, did you? I think I heard you. You mentioned VFW. You, you in any yeah, organizations? Yeah, I'm in VFW plus thirty two seventy two in Avon. Right. I I uh, been there, and I, it's been about eight years now. I remember, I tried to get in the VFW when I got back to Torrance. Right. Yeah. Back in 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 nineteen seventy. Right. Right. And I I went in there and, I, and the guy. And I went in and he says, uh, his own joining VFW. And he says, he says, looks at me and he says, we don't want your kind. This is a VFW. That's a veteran. We don't want your kind. Said, what kind? Said, I've been good. <laughs> I've been good. He <laughs> says, no, VFW, Vietnam veterans didn't want us. Oh, really? And then, then I'm not the only one that happened to. I, I talked to a couple other guys. They said, they said the same thing to me. I said, you don't want my kind. I don't want anything to do with you either. <laughs> I walked out. I didn't, I didn't, I, I think it, I, I, I addressed it a little differently, but I can't, can't put that on there. <laughs> in the interview. But anyway, uh, eight years ago, I met Bill Newman, right, and George, George England, right, who, who did the interview for it. Right. And uh, uh, they said, why don't you join? He says, nah, nah, come on. And we have an informal coffee down at down Dunkin' Donuts on Thursday. Not Dunkin' Donuts, uh, the friend was on Thursday. Come down to meet the guys. Best thing I ever did. I mean, they're good people. I mean, we got a, a number of World War II guys, uh, Korean War, we got Persian Gulf guys, and, and something like 66 Vietnam veterans. Yeah. Right? So, a good post. We we're, were number one in our district. Mm -hmm. That was an all-state post, right? And uh, I do a lot of, I do a lot of contributions for the, for the poppies. I spend a lot of time out there, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's good because it go, all the benefits go to veterans. Right, one shape, one shape. We there's no no money 
no money involved. Uh, uh, we, there's no volunteer costs. There's no administration costs. The VFW, 100% VFW proceeds go to the veterans where they're supposed to go. Nice. I feel good about that. I feel good. I did a good job. Well, Richard, is there is there anything you would like to add that we've not covered this interview so far? Uh, I'm trying to think, but I think that I think I covered. I think I overdid. I think I overdid it, but no, but, but I, I appreciate you guys coming down here and doing the interview again. Well, I want to thank you for your your service, and I want to thank you for taking the time to let us do this interview. And I want to thank you for your time. Thank okay. you both. Thank you.